the Jurassic Coast which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the newest addition this season is our plesiosaur skeleton, partial skeleton which was found near Golden Cap in 2004. We've got about a week and a half to go after the winter's hibernation period and um, we haven't been resting on our laurels, we've been beavering away getting new exhibitions and galleries refurbished for the coming years. So there's been lots of painting, redecorating, getting out new costume displays and creating lots of new family activities for the museum. On the stairs is a new exhibition um, called Bridport in 1911. One of our volunteers has done some meticulous research into the Bridport news from a hundred years ago and come up with some real gems of information about what was going on in the town. From that information we've made our own newspaper which visitors can read and then they'll be able to take away their own souvenir copy. Now we come upstairs and into our Roman galleries which we have given a bit of a refit. We have repainted the cases to make them look a bit more exciting and show off the objects more. We're currently waiting for some new interpretation panels to come about the Romans and also for our prehistoric display where we will have our mammoth tooth in a nice perspex case. My first experiences in museums were when I was about 14. I got to dress up as a Victorian kitchen maid and make scones on a kitchen range. And after university, I went to the Lake District and did an internship at the Wordsworth Trust that runs Dove Cottage, which is where Wordsworth wrote most of his poetry. This is part of our costume display, and to mark the royal wedding this year, we've taken some of the wedding dresses out of our collection. They're all from different periods. We've also got some dolls from our large collection and some royal wedding mugs. I went to Farnham in Surrey for three years where I was the assistant curator of the museum there and then came here in November last year. I'm interested in social history generally but particularly the 19th century I think is most fascinating for me. In this almost finished display are some embroideries done by a soldier during World War I who was fighting in India. They're really brightly coloured, especially this tablecloth here. I think it's a question of trying to provide something for everybody. It's not a question of dumbing down, it's just providing extra resources and activities to get as many people engaged as possible. This room um, we've made over as a children's dressing up and activity room, so there's plenty for our children and families to be able to touch and have a go with. We are having some costumes made for children to dress up in and we have some replica Victorian toys and also some slates for them to write on. There's always difficulties with museums. Um, we are a charity, so we, um, despite getting some funds from West Dorset District Council, we're still reliant on donations from the public. Um, we're extremely lucky here to have an extremely capable and devoted band of volunteers, about 40 or 50, who man the museum, look after the collection, and help out in our local history centre as well. Uh, two years ago we went free, which really made our visitor figures rocket, and last year we had over 20,000 visitors, which we were extremely happy with. We really hope to top that this year. Behind here are some Roman clothes for children to dress up in. I think one of the biggest aims, particularly for us, is to make ourselves as family friendly as possible. Um, there's the Garden Family Friendly Award, which is really prestigious, which is something we'd really like to work towards um, in the future. We're always on the lookout for volunteers. Um, you don't have to have a great knowledge of the area, just enthusiasm um, and uh, the opportunity to drink plenty of tea and coffee and biscuits is there, so do get in touch with us if you think it might be for you.